Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another review of another sunscreen. And today I'm going to be reviewing the Ultraviolet SPF 30 Clean Screen Skin Screen. This is what they call it. I'm gonna share with you all the details that you need to know. As always, I will apply it on my bare skin, show you what it looks like under makeup, and talk a little bit about ingredients, and then finally share my final thoughts. If this sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. But before I get into the video, kindly consider subscribing. That helps me out a lot. It helps out the channel. If you hit that thumbs up, it lets YouTube know that my content is valuable and it's going to allow others to see it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into today's video. <music> Ultraviolet is an Australian brand that recently launched on Cult Beauty and Space NK and I have reviewed two other uh, sunscreens from the line, one that I really liked and the other one not so much. I am actually planning to do a full brand review but it's, that's going to take a little bit of time until I get to use all their products. Anyway, so today's sunscreen comes in this beautiful squeezy tube. It looks like it's in a squeezy tube, but it actually has a pump. Really nice packaging. It looks very luxurious. And even the box itself looks really well made. It's got all the information that you need. Really beautiful packaging. This sunscreen comes in 1.7 fluid ounces or 50 ml. It claims to be, as it says here on the bottle, fragrance free, weightless, and a mineral skin screen. It also says that it's got UVA plus UVB broad spectrum protection. We're going to get into that because I do think this is a little bit misleading. And this retails for 32 pounds on Call Beauty or Space NK. Definitely up there in price, but compared to the Queen Screen, which is the one that comes in the dropper bottle that I recently reviewed, this is four pounds cheaper. I have used the sunscreen a ton. You guys can see I'm almost although I have used it almost all the way up to here. So maybe I have like one week left to use this if I were to use it on a daily basis. So you would run through this quite quickly, especially if you ended up liking it because by liking a sunscreen, it means you're able to reapply it generously and without feeling that it's heavy. So yeah, this wouldn't last you for a long time and actually 50 ml is not a lot for a sunscreen. I prefer my sunscreen to come in at least 70 ml. Just so you know, in case you end up liking this, it is quite expensive and you would most likely need to repurchase it every six weeks. Let's talk a little bit about ingredients. So on the bottle, it says that the sunscreen is mineral. However, it does have chemical filters in it, which I find to be very misleading and I don't quite get why they, they chose to say that it's mineral, even though it's not really a mineral sunscreen. Because to me, how I find this to be misleading is that if I were somebody looking for specifically mineral sunscreen, and I don't know much about filters or which one is chemical, which one is mineral, I would just read mineral and be like, yeah, this is mineral, I'll pick it up. And of course it is important that we as consumers read the label, read the ingredient list and know what we should know. But I do think that they could have made this a lot less misleading by just saying UVA plus UVB protection and that is it. Like don't claim something that you're not. And I don't quite get how they were able to get away with this. Anyway, let's get into the filters. So it's got three filters. One of them is a mineral filter. It's got titanium dioxide, 3%. So this is a physical filter. Number two is Tinosorb M and we've got 2.25%. And this is a hybrid filter that combines agents that are chemical and others that are mineral. So with this ingredient, you are getting both chemical protection and mineral protection. And the final ingredient here is Juvenal A+, and we are getting 1.6%. This is again, just like the previous one, a new generation chemical filter. And just like Tinosorb M, it is only approved for usage in Australia and Europe, and not really in the United States and Canada 
but it is quite effective. So with a combination of these three filters together, you are getting really good UVA and UVB protection. So yes, it is broad spectrum as they claim on the bottle, but it's not mineral. It combines both mineral and chemical. And these sunscreens are commonly known as hybrid sunscreens. Let's talk about inactive ingredients in the formulation. So they say this is alcohol free and yes, it is true. It is alcohol free. It's got also glycerin, which is a wonderful humectant and saccharide isomerate, which is again, a moisturizer slash a humectant. And this specific ingredient is known for helping the skin to stay hydrated for a longer period of time. It doesn't have any fragrance just as it claims on the bottle and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like swatched on my hand so it comes out like this tinted lotion it has something similar to like a peachy tint it's a very lightweight lotion that absorbs super quickly and Right now it's still a little bit wet, but once it gets absorbed into the skin, like give it a minute or two, it is completely dry. And you can see on my hand, there is a zero white cast. You will be seeing me right now applying it on my bare skin. As you just saw, it does come out in this peachy tint. It spreads quite nicely on the skin. I really like how it feels. It feels just like a very liquidy lotion. It gets absorbed super quickly. It does leave a little bit of its shine, but nothing too crazy and nothing for you to worry about really because that's going to mattify the longer you keep it. So I would say within like two minutes from application, that turns completely matte. On my skin tone, it doesn't have any white cast, but bear in mind, it does have physical filters. So if you are medium to deep, it might leave a little bit of a white cast despite the tint in it. It is super lightweight and I was able to apply three full pumps on my face without it feeling heavy or sticky. I was also able to apply it around my eyes without any issues and you guys, I have very sensitive eyes and this caused zero irritation. Then I went ahead and applied makeup on top. My makeup applied flawlessly on top of it. It didn't alter my makeup at all. It didn't alter my foundation which is something very rare with sunscreens. A lot of them, you have to work with them to make them work on top of foundation. But with this, it didn't do anything. My foundation went on super smoothly. It didn't ball up. It didn't cling to dry patches. Even later on throughout the day, as I was checking on my skin, it didn't sink into my pores and it didn't give me that white polka dotty look on my face that a lot of sunscreens that contain mineral filters tend to do. With my skin type, which is normal, I didn't feel the need to use it with another moisturizer, but I did read some comments and reviews online that a lot of people found it to be not enough, quite drying. So if you're somebody with dry skin, I would suggest maybe go in with a moisturizer and then apply the sunscreen on top of it and this way you would get the best result. But if you're somebody who has normal or normal to oily, maybe just try using it on its own and that can be good for you. I must agree, it is super lightweight as it claims on the bottle. It really feels just like a lotion. Like to me, I forget that I am applying sunscreen when I use this. It is that lightweight, I absolutely loved it. And since I started using it, I haven't been able to put it down. My only downside is that it is SPF 30 and not 50 and it's not waterproof. But of course, these two things do come at a cost. I wish that at some point in the future, we are able to formulate a sunscreen that feels just like this, but in an SPF 50. I am yet to find a hybrid sunscreen that is like that. Unfortunately, I haven't yet. If you know of any, leave a comment down below. But to me, this is hands down the best SPF 30 hybrid sunscreen that I have ever tried. And this is a lot coming from me because I try sunscreens on a regular basis. And I don't know, there's something about this that feels so good on my skin. And yeah, I think this is my favorite from this line and my favorite SPF 30 in general. It is pricey. Yes, there are alternative at the drugstore, 
So I wouldn't say that you have to get this now, but if you've got the money and you've been eyeing it, I think you're really gonna enjoy it. It kind of sucks that it is this pricey, especially considering that you only get 50 ml, which is really not a lot. And as I said, I'm already almost through it. So yeah, I'm gonna have to repurchase it soon if I wanna continue using it, but I really, really like it. And this sunscreen is going to be a sunscreen that I'm gonna reach for around this time only. I live in Dubai and here it's quite hot in the summer and the UV index is quite high. So this won't be enough for summertime. I definitely need SPF 50 and I do need something that is waterproof. So this is not going to be my go-to in the summer, but right now I am enjoying every single moment of it. So yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. I hope it was helpful to you. And I have a full playlist of different sunscreens that I have reviewed on this channel. So if you wanna explore more affordable options, definitely check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for my future content. And I shall see you in my next one. Bye guys.